What's up, guys? Welcome back to Country Bunkers Trains. Hope you're doing well. For today's video, we're getting back to our roots for a little bit. Over the past several videos in a couple weeks, we've been getting quite a bit of requests for some post-war content. And of course, I'm your Huckleberry. <laughs> I've got a good one pulled down off the shelf for us to take a look at here today. We have a ton of post-war fans here on the channel, and I think that's great, that's awesome. And I know that the post-war content has kind of slowed down these past several months, and that's due mainly to two different factors. The first one being, as I've mentioned before, I've really been getting in to the scale size modern command control engines and equipment. That's been my main passion, and it always will be. That's what initially got me into the hobby many years ago. The second factor being, I do not have an endless bank supply of post-war engines and equipment. I don't have a hidden treasure trove anywhere. What you guys see here is what I have. And we've done videos, quite a bit of videos in the past on a lot of the stuff in here. If interested, I would highly suggest going and checking them out. Some really cool pieces. Now, of course, not to fret, we do still have stuff coming up. Just not as much as we had a little while back. I do have some thoughts and some possible plans on a little post-war series coming up here in the future. But I'll leave that a secret. You guys will have to see what that is. Some of you might be a little upset. You might notice the shelving has changed. Some pieces have moved and possibly disappeared. I have sold off quite a few of my post-war fleet. I've kept my uh, what I would consider creme de la creme for me myself. Uh, but I have sold some of the stuff off that I just simply was not running. And as I've mentioned before, I don't like holding on to trains just to see them sitting on the shelves. That doesn't bring me a whole lot of pleasure. Yeah, of course, there's a few in here that'll never leave and might just stay on the shelf. But yeah, for the most part, I don't like them just sitting here not getting used. Not to dwell on this subject for too long, I do want to get to today's video. However, I will say that two of the hardest engines that I've let go were those two beautifully restored Elliott Wells GG1s. I do miss somewhat glancing over here on the shelf and seeing them sitting here. However, I wasn't running or enjoying them. To be honest, I think the missus is a little bit more upset than me. Those were her favorites. <laughs> I think all of us here in the hobby have a touch of the hoarding syndrome, myself included. We love filling these rooms up and getting as much crammed in here into our train rooms as we can. However, I have discovered, yeah, it's a little hard to sell or get rid of some stuff. However, the joy and excitement of getting something new from those proceeds makes you quickly forget the past item that you sold. It's a great way to keep the hobby going as well as getting new stuff. It makes the hobby pay for itself in a sense. Yeah, you got that initial investment of purchasing the engines you have, but if you want to get something new, and not necessarily modern, but another new-to-you post-war engine or whatnot, it's a great way to make that happen. But anyways, let's get to today's video already, right? <laughs> Today I thought we'd take a quick peek at this gorgeous post-war Lionel 2363 Illinois Central F3, a real looker. I'd have to say this one's in a tie for second place of the nicest, most original post-war engine here on the layout. This one's in a tie with the 2353 Santa Fe's and the first one being those beautiful 2354 New York Centrals. We have done a video, or this engine has been featured in a video here on the channel before in the past. A little while back we did a video on servicing a post-war engine and in that video, this is the engine we worked on. I'll post a link in the description below if you'd be interested in viewing it. The 2363 was available for two years. It first debuted in the 1955 catalog, heading a freight set as well as a single or separate sale engine by itself. It reappeared once more in the 1956 catalog, however only as a single or separate sale engine. As you can see, this engine sports a brown, orange, and yellow striped plastic molded body with black painted die cast frames and trucks. It features dual motors, magna traction, a functional horn, a three position E unit, an operating front coupler and dummy rear coupler, illuminated headlight and number boards, as well as two ornamental horns on the plastic body. When coupled together, the A and the B, the engine measures 26 inches long coupler to coupler. There were two variations of this engine, the first variation being early 1955. This variation had brown lettering for the Illinois Central on the sides. 
For late 1955 through 56 was the second variation with black lettering, which is what you see here, a bit more common than the first. Being this is a later produced F3, it does not sport most of the details like the earlier Santa Fe's and New York Central's. As you can see, this one has molded in portholes on the sides of the bodies, as well as molded in vents on top. We've gone over this once before in a previous video, however I figured we'd go over it once more for this video. You know these post-war F3s have always been a very popular engine, and this has led to a lot of fakes, remakes, and reproductions out there on the market. It makes it kind of hard to tell if you're looking at an authentic post-war engine, or if you're looking at a, a remake. However, there is one quick easy way to see if you're looking at an authentic. In late 54, early 55, the body mold for the F3 received a nick in the mold. This led to an imperfection on the roofs of these engines. And you can see it right here on the right side of the roof. See that little nick right there, or that little imperfection? We know this engine is an original. I've got another one over here as well with a lighter roof. Might be a little bit easier to see. But you can see this imperfection here in this corner by this seam. If the engine does not show this imperfection in the mold, then you know for sure that you're looking at an imposter. <laughs> Hopefully this helps one of you out. I picked this beauty up two years ago back in 2019. As I was saying earlier in the video, this is one of my nicest post-war engines here in the fleet. Also, as I had mentioned in the post-war servicing video that this engine was in, this engine is in very nice shape. You know, normally I get my engines from train shows, swap meets, garage sales, stuff like that. Not necessarily the nicest pieces out there. No, not junk, but stuff that needs a little bit of work and some servicing to get running again. However, this engine is the exact opposite. This one came from a hobby shop up in PA. A very nice example. It had been serviced. It was ready to run. Yeah, I did pay quite a bit more for this engine, being that the state of shape that it's in. However, I think it was very worthwhile. I did do a quick little search on the popular auction site before shooting this video, and it seems currently these engines are selling in the three to $500 range. Not too bad. These aren't necessarily the, the rarest F3s from post-war Lionel. However, only being produced for two years, they're not quite as accessible as some of the others. I don't know if it's due to the drearier, darker paint job on these engines, but I do seem to see when these engines come up for sale, they're usually in quite a bit better shape than the other or earlier, brighter engines. You know, you see a lot of Santa Fe engines pop up, and they show a lot of runtime and a lot of love. I don't know, maybe these engines back in the day were aimed more at the adult or modelist or modeler back then. These engines always show up a little bit nicer than the older Santa Fe's. They don't seem like they've been run and abused quite as much. I will say this thing is one hell of a smooth and quiet runner. This thing runs beautifully. Unfortunately, the horn is currently not working, but that's pretty much a given. It's very rare that I come across one with a working horn. <laughs> I have been tempted and thought about throwing an ERR upgrade kit into this engine like I did with the New York Central F3. However, I do pause because it is such a nice, clean, original example. I don't know. I could always absolutely just convert it right back to how it was. I just don't run it a whole lot because, as I was mentioning earlier, I'm so into the command control stuff. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'm sure I'll get berated by all the purists. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. That being said, though, this one being on the shelves most of the time, this is one of those engines that isn't going anywhere. I'm an F3 junkie. <laughs> but anyways, guys, enough babbling. I've been going on long enough. I've got some Lionel post-war inspired passenger cars hooked up behind her. What do you say we go ahead and take her for a few laps around the layout?
hope you enjoyed this quick little video on the post-war Lionel 2363 Illinois Central F3. If you did, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It would be much appreciated. I do want to give everybody a big thank you. I greatly appreciate all the support. All of you guys are awesome. Y'all rock. Until next time, guys, my name is Zach, and this is Country Bunkers Trains. Y'all take care. I'll see you the next go-around.